and teach you the way that thou shouldest go. I will instruct and I will teach by my eye. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will guide you by my eye. And the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Lord, in this service, instruct me. In this service, teach me. In this service, cause me to know the way, the step to take. The step to take, Lord, teach me by your word. Raise your voice. Speak to him now. Le kradi kata protusa, le kanto prete ke zizo zo prete ke le katuza, e padi kata prete ke zuzo zo, lombre di katu kasusa zatalie pogroko zusa. Lord, instruct us. Lord, teach us in this service. Let your name be glorified. Send your word now to every life. Let every life be transformed by your word. Let every life be transformed by your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Give Jesus a big hand as you take your seat. I am a child of destiny. It's a prophetic focus for the month. And our teaching series is unveiling your glorious destiny in life. Unveiling your glorious destiny. That is opening up your glorious destiny in Christ. In this service, I shall be sharing part 4B. Part 4A was by our pastor, my sister resident pastor, who I shared the first message. And I'm sure you are mightily blessed. Shout hallelujah. We can assess the plan of God for our life through major ways. We have been saying it. Through major ways. Through the word. So you have to be conversant with the word. Through the word. He said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. The word guides. The word instructs. The word teaches. Glory to Jesus. And number two, through heavenly vision, you had the testimony of God's servant. Uh, he had an encounter with destiny some years back now. About 33 years away. Had an encounter. And he saw in the vision the beating, the battered, the broken name them. And he couldn't stand it. And he joined, then he cried. And God said, but in the beginning it was not so. So you can also catch vision through heavenly vision. Also Paul on the way to Damascus. And he told King Agrippa, he said, I was not disobedient to heavenly vision. On the way to Damascus, there was a light that shone and brought the brightness of sun. Glory to God. But you have been told you don't need any special appearance. Peter said we were on the mountain with him where we heard the word from heaven. The voice came from heaven. First Peter chapter 1 verse 19 to 21. He said but now we have a sure my word of prophecy. So when the word is revealed to you is equally the same as every vision. Glory to God. The revealed word is the same as heavenly vision. And number three, you can identify your place in destiny by locating your unique gifting. You recall he gave them gifts. We have the gift in the body of Christ, the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teachers, the evangelist. Glory to God. And also we have talents. What's your talent? What can you do without struggling? Where can you fit to help humanity? As long as you are thinking how to be a helper to humanity, how to be a solution to humanity, Locate that area. It could be an access to your gifting. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. 
And also, your passion for Christ, your passion. What is your passion in life? Through the passion that burns within us as in Nehemiah. Nehemiah could not rest, he could not resist going to build up the wasteland, the falling gate of Jerusalem, the wall of Jerusalem collapsed. He could not resist, even though he was in the palace. Glory to God. Those are the major ways. I say major ways, so there are other ways you can find them. And you know, until you are born again, you don't gain access. Until one is born again, you can assess the plan of God for your life. Listen. Until you are born again, the door, the access to his plan is closed to you. It is as many as a led, and God cannot lead except you are for his own. He said, my sheep hear my voice. John chapter 10, verse 4 to 5. They will not follow Hyalin. He put forth his own sheep. He went before them. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Verse 5. They know his voice. John 10, verse 5. Now, and a stranger they will not follow. But they will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. Glory to God. This morning... You are redeemed to be more than a canker. You are redeemed to be more than a canker. Sir, you are not redeemed to be beaten and be battered in the journey of life. Sir, you are not redeemed to be a failure. No, you are not redeemed to struggle through life. Mm. You are not redeemed to fight to win. No. In fact, you are not redeemed to only conquer. You are redeemed to be more than a conqueror in Christ. The Bible says, talking about Jesus Christ. The, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, he has raised us up together and made us sit together where? In heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. Now, that means there is no demon on this earth. There is no wicked ruler in heavenly places that can tamper with your destiny except you surrender it. Where Christ seated is where you are placed. You only carry the body. But your spirit is regenerated. You have been raised together. You have been made to sit together in heavenly places. You need to understand this. You need the knowledge of this. Glory to God. When it is revealed to you, you can shout, I cannot be sick. I cannot be down. I cannot be a failure. No, I can't die before my time. Listen to this. That you have symptom of a sickness does not mean it is confirming you. There is a difference between the fact and the truth of life. You know, Jesus said, sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. Oh yes, there is a difference. The fact of life comes by observations. Observation of event, of seasons, scientific observations. What they see with their naked eye. But the Bible says we walk not by sight. We walk by faith. Faith is based on the truth. Faith is based on what? Faith is based on the truth. You are not redeemed to beg. Watch out. You are not redeemed to be sorrowful. You are be raised, I'd like you to understand, to be more than a canker in Christ. You should be angry. If you are, if, if you are obtaining average result, hear this, if all that you are getting can be explained logically, analytically, and naturally, something is wrong. 
If your result is based on natural and can be explained logically and concluded, then something is wrong with your Christianity. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Daniel never lived a natural life. No. The lion kept quiet. God will silence your, your adversaries. I said God will silence your adversaries. The man in Joseph has said, ah, I have known that God blessed me because you are in this house. And Laban said, from experience, I have come to conclusion that the hand of God is upon me because you are in this place. Wow, a blessing. You are redeemed to be a blessing. Come on. I'd like you to know something. Don't ever look down on yourself. It's an insult on Christianity. Don't look down. He said, where two or three are gathered in the army, they are there. Why is this nation like this? Because you have not taken your place. And why are you not taking your place? Because you don't even understand it. Glory to God. You are redeemed, pay setter. We are to show them. They are, talking of, they are talking of restructuring. I don't care. But we are to give them the pace. We are to give them instruction. Glory to God. Listen. When God is leading and the devil is leading, who should prevail? You are redeemed more than a canker. Hallelujah. Say, so for whom he did for now, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. You heard that in the first service. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Jesus is the example. That's what it means. Is what? Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. Uh -uh. You are Jesus on the earth. Can anybody molest Jesus? Listen, what cannot molest Jesus must not be molesting you. What cannot harass Jesus cannot harass you. Glory to God. You heard God's servant said, the plane wanted to land. And there was a demonic storm. So vehement. The people were afraid. And he told his wife, say, hey, relax. That's his language. If you have traveled with Bishop, no matter, say, just say, relax. And when he said, relax, don't say anything. His meaning, say, relax. And he said, I know the forces at work in me. You are redeemed not to crash. Hello? Hello? You are redeemed not to crash on this planet. Listen, you are redeemed not to suffer accident. One day, the driver was driving carelessly. I was inside the vehicle. In those days, I don't have my own vehicle. Ah, it was in the night. Careless driving. And then something just came upon me. Jesus' body was pierced. And the Bible said that blood and water gushed out. From that day, I knew I would never die by accident. I told the driver, I said, you just find me neat. I said, if you like, run 160. You find me neat on the road. Nothing will catch you. You are redeemed not to perish. You are redeemed not to be unnatural. You are redeemed to be extraordinary, sir. Yes, sir. Everywhere you went, you command result. He said, as the Father sent me, I send you. No more, no less. He's a number one example. We are to be conformed to his image. Whatever makes you cry, Whatever makes shame follow you. This hour, it will be eradicated in the name of Jesus. And you are redeemed to overcome by faith. Say by faith. <laughs> That's why I said in 1 John chapter 5 verse 14. He said, and this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything, if we do what? According to his will. What is his will? His word. He heareth us. Ephesians 6 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith. Now, what is faith in this situation? Taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith. Access to God's plan and guidance is the acid test to determine whether you are a sheep or not, sir. Let me say this. You need to know 
You need to have the knowledge of God's world. Being in a church for 20 years, as in our setup, does not show you are matured. No, it doesn't depict your maturity or spirituality. If after 20 years you cannot be led on a particular issue of your life, God cannot lead you. You don't even know. Then you are not growing up spiritually. God forbid dwarfness, spiritual dwarfness. Shout hallelujah. To overcome by faith, you need the revealer, the Holy Ghost himself. You need who? You need the revealer. He revealed. Now, pay attention. John 16, 13. John 16, 13. He will show you things to come. John 16, 13. Look, how be it when he, the spirit of truth. The spirit of what? The spirit of truth is the spirit of the word. He is come. He will guide you into all truth. That's why the bishop said, everything revealed to you here is heavenly vision. The spirit of truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you what? Things to come. Yeah, that is, he won't leave you in confusion. You will know the step to take. You will know the right way to go. You will know what plan is fake. You will know the 419 plans so that you can avoid it. I instruct and I teach. I guide you by my eye. Glory to God. They will wonder at you this year. I said they wonder at you this year. Jesus said, John 46, because of the guidance of the Holy Ghost, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. In our local language in the north, we say, Nine Hanya, Nine Rei, Nine Geskia. Did you see that? Ba Mezua, would you say, Taurina? Let me, that is no man coming to the Father, but by me. You see, the word is the way. Pay attention. Truth is based on the word. God's word is our instructions to walk in the path, to walk in the ways of God. Psalm 1, 1 verse 105, I've told you. The truth is our consultant. And is our constant guidance. You are redeemed to walk in the truth and not in the will of the facts. Listen to this. The fact says you went to hospital, the argument says you are sick. That is the fact. Do you know as lies punctured fact? When somebody is telling lies, you say, this is no fact. Isn't it? The same way is the fact punctures the truth. Paul wants Timothy to say, be careful of the observation of science and the fables of wives. Old wives fables, be careful. They are facts. They are natural. The truth is supernatural. The truth is what causes you to prevail. So when they say, you have this, that is the fact. But the truth, which is a personality, the truth, which is Jesus Christ, the truth, which you have been raised together with, says, he took this infirmity a long time ago. That is the truth. That is what? The truth. He took it. It doesn't matter my feeling. It doesn't matter the diagnosis. It does not matter what they see. Truth is true, sir. Truth does not change. There are no true generation. There are no modern truth. There are no old truth. Truth is truth. And truth stands forever. Hallelujah. Truth is not based on knowledge. Please get me. Truth does not base on knowledge. That is why I know today every sickness here will vanish from your body right now. <laughs> truth does not base on knowledge. Why? Knowledge changes. Hello, sir. Knowledge changes. Medical knowledge is changing. Medical science, I mean, I mean, knowledge of science is changing. But truth has never changed, sir. Come and give Jesus a big hand tonight, this morning. So, when they tell you, when the spiritualists are harassing you, you may not live long. Tell them, the truth says, I will fulfill my days on the earth. 
In fact, when you don't believe the truth, the Bible says you're a liar. You make God a liar. Glory to God. You will live long. I say you will live long. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, we walk not by sight. We walk not by fact. We walk not by sight. We walk not by fact. <laughs> but by faith. That is but by truth. Because faith is based on the truth. So we walk by faith. We walk by truth. What is the truth? The word of God. Unchangeable. The word that liveth and abided forever. Unchangeable word. The word is unchangeable. It's unchangeability forever. Glory to God. Don't let any devil harass your destiny. You are redeemed to live a better life. You are redeemed to be more than a conqueror. You don't need to struggle to fight. You don't need to fight to win. You are in Christ Jesus. You are already declared a winner from the bath. From the day you gave your life to Christ, you are declared a winner over any battle of life. Listen to me. In your family this year, your glory will show. That business, because you are the team of the Lord, it will not collapse. Yeah. That your head will not kill you. Yeah. In heaven, they don't cry. There's no tear. There's no sorrow. That is where you belong, sir. You are not permitted to handle business and fail. Get the understanding. You are redeemed to save this nation. Listen. Every believer hear me. You are redeemed to save this nation. If you allow Islamic fundamentally to take over this nation, you are doomed. No way. Glory to God. I said glory to God. When Daniel, they gather around him, they say, we'll kill this man. They use the king to change the order. The man said, me? He said, I'm ready. He went to his house, opened the window, and began to speak in tongues. Yaria bobo stekelia, ila baba ila bobo ye karia makatobo me gagazi aka ya poli boli aba. I say who can who can arrest God Almighty? Who can arrest the King of Kings? And they say, Ha, ah, King, we have caught him. God said, Leave them. <laughs> Everybody that came across that and suffered for it, all that gathered to put him to death were put to death. All that put Daniel to be a meat for Daniel became a pursuit for Daniel. This year, all your enemies shall be a pursuit for you. Anyone that says you won't serve your God, anyone that decree that you will not, your children will not serve God, this year, they will serve death in the name of Jesus Christ. I said they will go down to the grave one by one this year. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are redeemed to be more than a conqueror. Glory to Jesus. Don't play religion. This is the reality of life. Because of my time, number two, you are redeemed to triumph by revelation. By what? By revelation. Listen, every revealed word is the truth. Sir, if it is not revealed, it will mean nothing to you. It was not revealed to Peter on the sea. He stayed there all night, naked, caught nothing. It is the revealed word that stands out as the truth. If it is revealed to you, man, no devil can teach you anything. It was revealed to Simeon that you will not see death until you have seen the law. The man relaxed. Every revealed word is the truth. So what do you do? There is a responsibility to labor in the word. Don't carry Bible ordinarily. This is a mysterious book that brings mysterious results. This is a mysterious book that provokes inexplainable results. It commands inexplainable breakthrough. Oh, shout hallelujah. I said, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He revealed to Daniel what will happen. By revelation, Daniel took the whole nation to the fourth generation. They were subject to Daniel. 
Till Jesus come, this nation will be a Christian nation. Whether the devil likes it, accept it or not, whether they coerce anybody or not, all I know is as long as this nation, as long as God has put you and me, forget it. No devil can make this nation to serve another God. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. You belong to the order of the tribe of lion. That is who you are. You are to devour. But it has to be revealed to you. It is revelation that leads a life to revolution. Revelation is what revolutionizes your destiny. Glory to God. Now, if it is not revealed, that's a problem. Then you are ignorant. Then you are in darkness. If what Jesus said, I was daily with you in the temple. Luke 22 verse 53. He said, when I was daily with you in the temple, Luke 22, 53, you stretch not hands against me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Now darkness reign where there is no light. Ignorance reign where there is no revelation. That's why you see believers suffering. God does not ordain it that way. Listen to me, sir. Do you know why people are afraid to give? Ignorance. The fear of giving. It is the fear of giving. Why? He feared that when he gives, nothing more will remain. So he, the devil keeps in in ignorance, darkness. It is not the problem of poverty at all. No. The problem is not problem of poverty. The problem is fear of lack, fear of giving. You know why people don't pay tithe? Fear of giving tithe. That, Lord, if I give hey, from 100,000, if I pay 10,000, it could remain 90,000. And the devil come. You know, our ignorance is a stronghold. He said, casting down all imagination, is it? The devil said, hey, you come on 10,000, you are finished. 90,000. You're not going to do you. You're not going to do. What do I do? Say? Change that to next month now. Next month. And when next month come, you remember, he's an accuser of brethren. Already he's accusing you to the father. He said, it's your child. He didn't pay that. So, I close the door of, 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 of his blessing. You see, legally, the devil accused you and me to, to the father. Legally. He's based on legality. He tell the father, he didn't pay that. So, he locked. And there is a divorce again. He divorced something. They sent from the village. Your mother. Hey. Now, yesterday, he collapsed. So. And you didn't even think. 20,000. Then, you didn't pay last month. 100,000. This month, and then 20,000. The money remains 60. He tell you again, oh boy, you are in serious problem. Don't pay. Ign our ignorance is a stronghold. It is not about poverty. It is about fear of lack. Fear of tomorrow. I decree every fear of lack, every instigation of poverty around you, be totally shattered today in the name of Jesus Christ. You are redeemed to be a lender to nation, sir. You are redeemed to be in abundance. I tell you the truth, man. You are not redeemed to be a beggar. But it has to be revealed to you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number three. I've said you are redeemed to be more than a conqueror. By love now. By what? What do you mean by love? Because of time, let me just say something here. The love of God in your heart is the anchor and the root of every victorious life. The love of God in your heart, in your heart, mark my word, is the anchor and the root of all victorious life, of all triumphant living. At the root of every triumphant Christian living is the love of God. It is the commander of all fortunes. Commander of what? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man what God has in store for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. And Romans 8, 20, 20, 28. All things, how many things? Work together for them that does what? That love God. Wow. All things. Beginning from today, things will begin to work out in favor for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me hear your resounding. Amen. Amen. 
Now, hear this. It is the commander of all fortunes. Look at David. David had it in mind. He said, I have made provision. God told me not to build. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 1 to 6. He made provision. He said, I can't be living in a cedar house. And the house of the Lord is in tent. I. He said, no. And God was moved. God said, ah, I appreciate you. None of the children of Israel, since I've taken them from, from, from Egypt, has ever said, where will God dwell? I don't dwell in a mortal house, but thank you for even remembering me. You see, if it is in your heart, sir, the thing will be in your hand. If it is in your heart, it will be in your hand. Why is love so relevant? Why is the love so relevant? Number one, Love is at the root of establishment of the church of Christ. Love is at the root of establishment of the church. I will build my church and the gate of hell shall not prevail. Listen to this sentence. In Nigeria, this nation, no gate of hell will prevail against the church of Jesus. Let me hear your quick amen to that. He told Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter said, yes. He said, prove it. Hey, hallelujah. He said what? Prove it. Peter said, what do you mean? Okay? He said, feed my lamp. Feed my what? Second time, the master looked at him. I'm about to go. Peter, did you confess you love me? He said, master, I do. He said, feed my sheep. This is the root of the formation of the body of Christ. Ah, the third time, Peter, I'm asking you, do you love me? Peter was angry. Why is Oga doubting my love? Why are you doubting? He said, I do feed my sheep third time. It is at John 21, 15 to 17. The love number two is, is the cord that bind all the forces together and preserve them from failing. Number two, I said number one, love is at the root of the establishment of the church. I said, I will build my church, the gate of hell shall not prevail. Matthew 16, 18 to 19. And Matthew 18, to, Matthew 18, 18 to 19 also. Number two, love is the call that binds all the forces together and preserves them from failing. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse, 4, verse 12 says, a trifold cord is not easily broken, isn't it? Number three, why love is so relevant? Love is the greatest of all forces in the kingdom. The greatest of all forces. Love is what binds us together, indivisible entity. The greatest forces in the kingdom. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 13. He said there is hope, there is uh, 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 faith, and there is love. But the greatest is what? Love, charity. Glory to God. Now, let me say this as I begin to close. What is love? What is the scope of your love? What is the scope of your love? Is, com is passion for God. Passion for what? Passion for God. Loving what God loves. Going out, so being sold out. Deadly commitment to the things of God. Passion for God. Passion for what? Listen to me. On Monday, the rain is falling. Will you not go to office? Will you not go and open your shop? Won't you eat? I've never somebody said rain is falling, I won't eat, and it's not fasting. No, the first thing he looks for is looking for mama put or looking for what to cook. There is no amount of rain that can stop you from going to your office. Two of us. You are even running not to be late. Where is your passion for Jesus, my brother? My sister, where is your passion? What is what are you burning for in life? Oh. What is the reason why you are here on earth? Passion for God. Passion for dying souls outside there. They don't know. That's why there is kidnapping in Nigeria. Don't you know? That's why they kill for political reason. That's why they are doing rituals. Because they are dying. And they can't help themselves. And Jesus has redeemed you a conqueror to conquer them from the kingdom of darkness. God has raised you up in Christ to change your base. What is your passion? What are you burning for? Are you burning to build a house only? 
Are you burning to buy land? Are you burning to acquire political offices? All those things will come to an end, including you. But God live it and abide there forever. The scope of love is passion for God. Are you concerned about dying souls there? He saw David. The man said, he stood out among the congregation of children of Israel. He said, hey, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is defiling the, the, com and the armies of the living God? I choose to be different. I can't bear it, a young man. And the brother said, you have come. I know the pride in your heart. Say, brother, this is not pride. I'm ready to live my life. I'm, I, I have passion for God and for his people. I can't tolerate this man insulting my nation. What is your passion? Is it to cook and eat? Is it to get job? Passion, the scope of love of Jesus. Glory to God. Be on your knee for this nation, Lord. No demon will take over this nation, Nigeria. Our children, children will never serve another God. Passion for God. David said, no way. David offered himself to slew Goliath. Passion for God. What is your passion? Buying clothes, dressing. What is your passion? Buying pomade or manna. What is your passion? Buying, what do they call it? Turare, or what do you call it here? Perfumes. What's your passion? Husband. Your passion? Why? But hear this. What shall a man give for his soul? What shall a man give for his soul? Man, Paul said, we are killed all day long. He said to live his game for Christ, for me to die is nothing. Passion. And number two, compassion for man. Compassion for what? Compassion for man. I'd like to end the service, this second service here. Compassion for man. Passion for God, compassion for man. It takes you to the realm of more than a conqueror. It validates your status as more than a conqueror. It positions you in the realm of undefeatable entity. It positions you more than a conqueror, sir. <laughs> you are changing level. I say you are changing level. In your time, in my time, this nation shall remain a Christian nation. In the life of our children, children, because of the love of God burning our heart, this nation shall remain a Christian nation. Oh, oh I can hear your loudest amen. Choir, do you know this song? I've got a fire in my soul. Do you know it? So go and learn it. The passion of God burning in my soul. The fire that cannot be quenched. I'd like you to pray because the time has gone fast. Encounter with destiny begin with passion. And unquenchable passion for Jesus. Pray all through the night. <laughs> Lord, they are there on the street. Save their life. They mustn't go to hell. Passion. A compassion for man. Glory to God. Doing whatever your hand can lay hand to help your neighbor, to help humanity. Not looking for what to collect, but looking for how to be a helper. Compassion for man. I'd like you to pray. Lord, open my eyes to see the reality of my redemption. Open my mind, open my heart. To know my redemption status. Open me to know that I have been saved never to suffer defeat in life. It's an encounter with destiny. Lord, open my eyes today to see where you have placed me and to see my responsibility in the kingdom of God. I'd like you to pray. Pray for yourself. Li prada kato prodeke zukata. Gegeria katu kazuka. Ankato predeke liya. Yigala ko predeke zukata. Mandi posto ko predika. Yepalia kato produ. 
Ragazuso Zopre, Libra da Kazusa, Campato Prede, Rebrodis, Rebroda, Rakutabla de Gesuso, Empoto Pre. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I want your eyes closed, your head bowed to Jesus. I'd like you to think one minute. If you are not redeemed, it is very dangerous as the time passes on. You know your heart. The beginning of salvation is giving your heart not a mental concern. Even the devil knows there is God. Not a mental, yeah, yes, I know there is God. Yes, I go to church. No. He said, give me your heart. The beginning of regeneration. I want your head bow, your eyes closed. You are here this morning. You want to be more than a conqueror. You don't want to suffer defeat, failure, sickness anymore. You have to give your heart to Jesus. I want to pray for you. This first set. And I'd like you to lift up your hand quickly and I pray for you. I want you to raise your hand. You want to be redeemed more than you want to be more than a conqueror. No more defeat. No failure in your life again. Raise your hand to Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these brethren. This morning I ask you, Lord, that you redeem their destiny from frustration and misfortune by the blood of Jesus Christ. Whatever makes them to suffer failure in life, today marks the end of it in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for these saved souls. Thank you because they will never be the same again. Thank you because they will change level in Jesus' precious name. Yes, come my brother that have lifted your hand. My sister, come.